Hey everyone, welcome to a very long awaited video. I'm going to try and speak quickly through this video so that I don't end up talking for way too long. Um, this is going to be the plan. This is my game plan for the sixth grade for Blossom and Root, like the solution to the problem. So to recap, we have been using Blossom and Root curriculum from first through fifth grade. They announced um, earlier in the year that they will not be releasing sixth grade for the fall. My daughter is in the grades as they came out. Like, so for as long as we've been using Blossom and Root, um, she is ready for the next grade when they release it in that, that fall. Um, and so this year should have been grade six, but they needed more time. This is like just a couple moms working on this curriculum. They work so hard, they do such a good job. They added history portion for American history called River of Voices. And that took up a lot of their time. And once you kind of hit sixth grade, that's like middle school for Americans, I think. And this is like the curriculum creators are American. That's why I'm talking about it um, as Americans. So I know that took a lot of time and middle school is like a different level. It's, it's a little more intimidating. You just want to make sure that you're really thorough so i understand why the sixth grade is delayed but what that meant for our family is that we won't be able to use it because now probably forever for my daughter um the grades will be behind and they won't be the levels we need um so i had a couple of options of what i could do because my son is in third grade but he has curriculum it's not a big deal but for my daughter going into sixth grade, this is such a stressor. And I, there's a Facebook page for Blossom and Root families. And I know a lot of other people were in this position. Um, a lot of families here on YouTube who are also homeschoolers just kind of wanted to know what I was doing for sixth grade. So what I decided to do is piece together our own curriculum based off the structure and the rhythm and the flow of Blossom and Root curriculum. So we love Blossom and Root. I feel like it's a one of a kind curriculum. It's, there's really nothing like it anywhere else because it's so free flowing. It works for people who are more unschooly based like we are. We started as unschoolers and it's just like super flexible. I've raved about Blossom and Root enough. I don't really need to rave too much. If you see me looking down, it's just because obviously I needed notes for this. So that is what I am looking at down below on my bed in my, in my trusty notebook. So what we decided to do for sixth grade is to create our own and base it off of Blossom and Root. Um, now here's the thing, this is probably going to look different for everybody. If you are watching this video because you are in the exact same position as I am, um, what I am doing, I'm gonna be very specific. So I'm gonna have a chat with you about what I'm doing and then I'm going to uh, very specifically give you like the book list I'm using and and all of the specifics for those of you who really want it and need it. Um, also a really great book list though I think that I've come up with for anybody who has a kid around you know 11, 12 ish and wants to use it that's cool too. So that way if you're more interested in like the general idea then if you want to check out after that you can but if you want to stay for like everything then I'll add some more details in the end. So when this first got announced in earlier in the year, I posted in the Blossom Maru Homeschool Families Facebook group and I got just like a huge response of ideas, suggestions, things like that. So I used, I, I pulled on those suggestions again, um, some kind of things I talked to my homeschool facilitator about, um, just different brains I picked and then of course my own methods and ideas and we kind of piece together this curriculum. I think this was a lot easier. I used to piece together my curriculum myself before, um, but since I've been using Blossom Root for so many years now, I feel like it's so much easier to just kind of like plug in different things to the same formula, if that makes sense. So I pulled from Blossom and Root, obviously, um, Build Your Library and Brave Writer Arrow book lists and stuff so that is where i pulled my book list and inspiration from this year for like creating a different a sixth grade robust book list now here's the part where like this might not work for you if you're looking for the exact if you're in the exact same positions as me 
because of the way I'm piecing this together. So maybe take the idea and make it your own if you need different things, or maybe this will work exactly for you and it'll be great. But I find bluffs, I find blossom and roots so just thick with things to do. Like it's, it is such a robust curriculum that I would find it nearly impossible to get through all of the work, like to actually do everything in the curriculum. I have never done that before. It would be really difficult. And a lot of Blossom River people say it takes them two years or a year and a half to get through all of the material that we're given, which is an amazing, amazing problem to have. It's not even a problem. It's just like an awesome bonus. So with that being said, I knew that this change was coming really early in the year. Like I said, like at the beginning of the year, they announced it. Thank goodness they told us in advance. Um, so what I did was I stretched one of my science units and I filled it in with other things and um, for my daughter in the fifth grade, so Blossom Roots grade five, I stretched the first science unit and um, I saved the whole astronomy unit for this year because I knew I would need something and I didn't want to create an entire science curriculum. So I actually have the entire fifth grade science unit that I'm going to do with my sixth grader. Um, it's not really a difference that it's like, oh, that was designed for sixth grade and that, or for fifth grade and I'm using it for sixth because Blossom and Root is so flexible that there's a lot of rabbit trails, like just learning branches you can go down that have, are related to the topic where you can dive deeper if you want. Um, and also their levels are very general where they are not necessarily like grades, but they are designed for a certain age range in mind. So if it can work for a fifth grader, it can absolutely work for a sixth grader. So what I've done is I've gone and looked at grade four and five to see what we missed, what we skipped, what we skimmed over. And I used those things to fill holes in and create um, a curriculum for sixth grade. And then I also added pieces from Build Your Library and um, Arrow Brave, Brave Writer arrow bundle, which is the 11, 12 year old bundle. Um, again, I didn't like use their curriculum. I'm just taking the inspiration from the free resources they provide, their book lists, things like that. And then just plugging it into the blossom and root formula. I really hope this makes sense. Okay, so for language arts, this was probably the easiest for me to transition just because I understand the goals and the things that blossom and root is trying to achieve with their really robust language arts program. Um, so because we kind of know the formula of how fifth, like I could even use fifth grade prompts and worksheets and we can just scratch out that title of the book and put the one we're working on in. Um, so I stuck with some of the books we skipped because here's the other thing. So I got pregnant at the end of March and so for the, the entire spring, I was incredibly sick. So we ended up stopping school in early April and we have not picked up school since then because I couldn't, I was way, way, way too sick. So that kind of was a blessing in disguise because it's given me a chunk of material that was left undone um, that we could have just like left and moved on. It was fine, but now I can use that and we can do it again or do it now in, in the sixth grade and, and be fine. So I actually had quite a few books that we skipped or missed um, in the language arts portion. And then I used, um, Build Your Library has a decently similar idea for literature books. Um, and I liked a lot of Brave Writer Arrow uh, books and I just pulled from both, but I think I pulled a lot from Brave Writer. So the first thing I did was decide how many books. So Blossom and Root last year did 15 or 14 books. Um, Brave Writer, I think had 10 books on their list. So I kind of just thought about what our year would look like. And again, I'm having a baby in December. And so that is also factoring into like what I'm thinking about what's going to be easiest for me to homeschool my two children and what kind of workload I want to take on. Um, so I chose 11 books for sixth grade curriculum and I'm really happy with that number. So I put out 11 slots and I looked first at the Blossom Root fifth grade that books that we missed and skipped through the year and I popped some of those in there and then I looked at 
uh, Build Your Library and the Brave Writer programs and I looked up the books and I read about the books and I um, just looked into it and I picked ones that I think would excite my daughter the most. And that is what I love about the, my book list. Like I'm actually so excited about the book list I chose because it's so customized to books I think she would really thrive and enjoy because I got to pull from all these different spaces. Don't get me wrong, Blossom Maria has amazing book lists and we've always loved all the books, but I kind of was able to just cater this to her. So if you have a daughter, especially, um, I think this book list is gonna be really awesome no matter what kind of homeschool curriculum or not curriculum you guys use. And I will share that with you after I'm done talking about the main things I did. So that was an easy thing. And my plan with that is just to use the writing prompts, um, any grammar that we skipped over. For me, I'm like, language arts is kind of my jam. So it's really easy for me to throw in grammar, spelling, things like that. Um, and there's so many free resources online and everything about um, grade level, grammar and things you kind of want on that checklist to have your child know around that age to continue to build their um, language base and and just their writing skills and everything so that's kind of my plan when i need it i will just like i had such an easy time accessing that last year and the year before so um that is something i plan to do but it's really really simple to use the same most of the same worksheets from grade five and just print them off and we'll just like change the name on them um, for the book that we're using and still use the same formula. So we'll still, the way Blossom and Root is laid out is it's kind of like the same formula for each book. Like we like we do uh, narration, we talk about the story and there's, uh, you know, a space to draw pictures. So it's really, really easy to just swap out a book. And I did that a lot in previous grades anyway, when, when my kid wasn't interested in one of the books, we would just swap it out. So I already have experience with that. So that's the plan. I'm not worried about the worksheet part. I'll just print off worksheets and we'll just swap out the title. Or, I mean, there's some people that don't do the worksheets at all and that's totally cool. So this, the grammar, this also allows us to go over some of the grammar and um, spelling and everything that we might have glossed over, we might have missed, or we might just need to go back and do a little deeper for my child's understanding perhaps. And then when we need more, I'll have the resources of the internet and everything like that to just do grade level grammar, grammar pull words from the books we're reading and have her work on those. Um, so again, I'm just using that same formula and just plugging in different things. So it's actually not that complicated. For art, there is a ton of art we missed and skipped over the grades. And I feel like it's, um, again, because this curriculum is so robust and we have had a really busy past two years. So there's definitely been some stuff that we have just missed. And again, or glossed over or could go deeper in and we didn't go deeper or whatever. So I'm not worried about art. I just plan to pull from the same, uh, a lot from Blossom and Root, a lot of like artist studies and methods. We're also a really artsy family. My, especially my daughter is really, really into art. So it's gonna be a really easy subject to make sure we are getting an education in. And then there's also an entire package that I had bought and I think they're doing another, there's gonna be another release. Um, but there was a huge, huge homeschool package released with like the Simple Living Collective or something. I will look it up and link it below, like the main website it went through, but it was basically this homeschool website that collected lessons and mini units from homeschoolers from all over the world. Um, so there's like seasonal, I have seasonal, like seasonal studies. I have, um, social studies, science, math, language, and some of it is for younger kids, but some of it can be adapted to older kids. Some of it's like for middle kind of grades. And that was $25 and literally just endless resources and so many like entire units all the printable pages everything i'm going to remember i'm going to look it up while i edit this video and i will have it in the comments below if i can't find it for some reason i will like let you guys know but if that goes up for sale again like buying something like that can be so awesome because i've been able to just supplement with that sometimes 
oh, it's autumn. Let's do this autumn activity that is also school and let's, you know, so I plan to kind of throw a lot of those things into our year as well. So for science, I mentioned that I'm going to be doing grade five astronomy is going to last us an entire half year. It will be half of the year of science that I do not have to worry about. The other half of the year, I'm going to blend with two different things. My son is using grade three blossom and root, and that is the animal kingdom. And this is the only grade, this is the last grade I actually have to buy is grade three. Because with my daughter, we started, I learned about blossom and root in third grade. I was still really on the fence about if I wanted to buy curriculum. And so we used blossom and roots free guides and um, the free resources that they had available and the sneak peeks. And I did the formula that I was using to create our own curriculum inspired by blossom and roots stuff that they had available for the third grade. So it feels like we've done third grade blossom and root, but we haven't actually done the full curriculum. So now for the first time, we will be doing the full third grade curriculum with my son and the big, big thing for science, well, they like the thing we do for the entire year is the animal kingdom and we just get to dive really deep into the animal kingdom. We loved this in the way we did it in third grade by not using the curriculum, but being inspired by it. So I'm so excited to use the actual curriculum now. My daughter wants to be a wildlife conservationist when she gets older. She's like so in animals. And although she has already studied these and knows so much about animals, I feel like it's going to be very easy for us to deep dive. So I asked her, hey, your brother is using is doing Animal Kingdom. And she's like, can I do that too? So I said, sure. So we're gonna spend the first half doing Animal Kingdom with both kids. And for my daughter, I'm just gonna go really hard on the rabbit trails. I'm gonna make it more challenging for her. I'm going to expect, um, a higher level of of deep diving for her than my son and we're going to use the third grade for kind of both kids for half of my daughter's year of science and I'm really comfortable with that I think it'll be really easy um, again it's like no extra work really on my part because the way Blossom and Root is designed all the pages are kind of the same and you can just expect different levels of work um, depending on how old your child is. So that's what I'm going to do. Plus I'm going to substitute with um, other science-y topics. Like I have other science units, like I talked about that I've just got saved. Um, some world science. And if we're being perfectly honest, um, like we're gonna make sure we have rounded out all of the corners about puberty and all of that kind of self-science stuff. I'm gonna throw that in there as well for that first half of the year. And I feel like that will create a very nicely robust curriculum for my daughter. And then last but not least for social studies. Um, so I don't do, this is again, this is what I'm doing for social studies. Science and language and art are really the kind of things you would focus on. We're in Canada, so we do our own math and we do our own social studies because they are different. Um, so my plan for social studies, this actually came from my homeschool facilitator. I loved her idea. It was super simple, but super, um, really, it, it has the opportunity to be really, be really robust. So, and that is to pick a place and kind of dive in. That's what I'm calling it. Uh, but it's basically, we're going to choose places around the world that my daughter wants to choose. Um, you know, pick different places and let's dive into it. We're going to, we're going to cook meals from that place. We're going to learn about their culture. We're going to learn about how the children live there. What is school like for them? Um, I want it to be kind of from a child, child's perspective because I think there's a really great value in that of like, of relating to other children. Um, in different parts of the world so we're just gonna like pick a place and explore it like what continent is it on like you know and we're just gonna make that super so super social studies and that was the suggestion by my suggestion sorry from my school facilitator who has you know schooled all of her children up until now they're, they're all out of school now but it sounds so fun something my daughter will absolutely engage in and i'm so excited to just find out what we learn because it's kind of being left open-ended Plus I have so many units from that $25 bundle I bought that it's gonna be really, really easy and simple to incorporate this. We're also gonna splash in more Canada studies because my kids are still elementary age and they're still learning a lot about just Canada, provinces, 
blah, 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 all the Canadian bits. Um, and I think like we're gonna start with Back to School Around the World, which is a unit that came with one with the bundle I had bought. And it's just a um, unit about like how different kids from around the world start their back to school and what that looks like for them. I think that would be a really fun kind of intro social studies unit for both my kids. Um, and I think we'll just do this for both of my children and this will be my social studies. So I'm just sharing that mostly for, well, this could really be for anybody, um, but for a lot of my Canadian friends who really struggle with social studies because it is hard to find Canadian homeschooled social studies curriculum. Okay, you guys, that is the long-winded stuff. And now I'm going to share my very specific book list with you of the books I have chosen for my daughter for sixth grade. This is my sixth grade book list. I've gone through and I've picked out like what I think will both both a mix of like diverse books and things that I think are going to capture. I just want this to be really adventurous, really juicy education year for her. Um, we took such a huge break that I just want her to fall back in love and be also I want to use these books. We do them all as read aloud so that that's a bonding thing for us as well with our new baby coming. I just want this to just be like a really fun thing that she remembers her and I reading really awesome books from this year. So the 11 books that I have chosen for our sixth grade language arts curriculum, remember we're just gonna be using the formula for the work pages from fifth grade, we'll just print them off, whatever. I'll white out the name of the book and we'll, we'll move along with it and add in our own um, grammar, etc., as we need. Okay, so book number one, this is no particular order. I haven't decided what order we are going to do it in. I'm actually doing two books in this list for both my children because I think they would, one is actually on my son's list anyway, and it was on the build your library list for, uh, for sixth grade. So they were, again, we're kind of getting into those grades where like some of the books cross over now. So it was in the build your library sixth grade list and the blossom Heart third grade list. And so it was, that works perfectly for me. And that is the Phantom Toll Booth. So we're gonna work on that together with both kids, which is just so much easier for me as well. And the second book on my list is called The Mysterious Benedict Society. A lot of people are probably familiar with it, but again, just like a fun adventure book that I think she will really enjoy. I just really want her to like get hooked on these stories. I want us to not be bored at all reading them. I want us to just like really dive in and each book be an adventure. Um, so that will be a fun one to read. The third one, and again, this is the second one that I am doing with both my children, is The Hobbit. We were supposed to do The Hobbit with my son last year, but it was one of the books that was just towards the end that we would have done in the spring, and I was too sick. So I also just think this is, we're a really nerdy family. Um, my kids are both very well aware of Lord of the Rings, and I think this is a book that we just should read together as a family. So we're gonna be doing The Hobbit together with both children. Number four is The Night Diary. This is one we missed from the um, fifth grade Blossom River curriculum. Number five is Sisters of Never See. No, Sisters of the Never See, sorry. And this is a really interesting, fun kind of retelling of Peter Pan. And it looked super awesome, something my daughter I think would really connect with. And another, again, just like this robust, adventurous, fun book. That's really what I was going for with this book list. Um, number six is A Place to Hang the Moon. I think this one was a crossover book in a couple of the curriculums. It sounds like a really awesome book and I'm excited to add that to our list. Number seven is The Evolution of Calpurina Tate. Am I saying that right? Calpurina? Calpurina? Um, the Evolution of Calpurina Tate. That looks like a really fun book. That was one, ooh, what was that from? I think that one was from Brave Writer. I don't remember where each book is from, but if you go look for their book list, they're free and accessible, and you can look at all of the different options for yourself if you'd like. Uh, book number eight we are doing is A Kind of Spark. I'm really excited for this one for her. Um, book number nine is Pages and Co, Tilly and the Wanderers, or sorry, Tilly and the Book Wanderers. This sounds like such a magical, fun story. It looks like a really fun book. I'm really excited to dive in with her for that one. It's like a, a little girl 
Ben's grandparents run a bookstore and some of the stories start to come alive. Um, just seems really fun. And again, all of these books are between, like are, are I think between grades five and seven and like the age range of 11, 12, 13 year olds. So it's, it, they're all like perfectly in that, that middle that we want it to be in. Um, book number 10 is The Girl Who Drank the Moon. We missed that one in, I don't know if it was fifth grade or fourth grade, but it was one of our misses, but it was also one of the ones that was recommended in one of the other curriculums for this year. So it worked out really well. And then book number 11 is Wish. And I am super excited for that one as well. Doing this book list hunting has actually made me replace a couple of my son's book, books, sorry in his third grade curriculum. And he, uh, I just replaced, I think like three, three or four books, um, just that I didn't think he would be very interested in. And I replaced them with some more fun ones while I was on this book hunt. Um, so maybe I'll make a video and I'll just share what I, what I swapped out and give you a couple more book suggestions for any other homeschoolers who are looking. Okay, so that is my ultimate plan. And then of course math is just different anyway. I, I, like you find your own math depending on where you live. So we will, I'm actually looking for an entirely different math curriculum now because, oh, we're struggling with finding one that is not dry and boring and makes my kids crazy. So um, I can do an updated video and kind of let you guys know what we chose for math if that would interest any of you. It's just really hard to find Canadian centered math that is not dull. Um, so I hope this was helpful. I know it was like a lot of information, a lot of talking. I hope it made sense. If you are in this position where like you need this kind of information and you are trying to figure out what you are going to do for sixth grade and you have any questions or anything that I can clarify for you, please put it in the comments below. I will promise, I promise I will get back to you. Um, I hope this was helpful. So this is our plan. I will keep you updated throughout the year. I will do some check-ins. Um, at least two check-ins to let you know how it's going and how it's working out but i have so much confidence this was probably the easiest um year to put together for me on my own i've again i've made curriculum in the past and this just following the blossom root formula and plugging things in made it so so easy that i was actually able to come up with this plan in one day which was super awesome so i hope this was helpful i hope you are all doing really well i hope you're all ready and excited for back to school time whenever you decide to start um, and if you are in this position where you're creating your own curriculum and you went a different route and you want to tell me about it, feel free to do that too. I love hearing about that. Um, but until next time, we will see you in my next video. Bye guys.